The Miseducation of America on the Ari Hoffman Show. And just when you think the education system in this country couldn't be any more screwed up, there are more stories by the day proving that it is. Joining us now to discuss the various things your kids are going to be learning when they pay for that very, or rather you pay for that very, very, very expensive college education. Jennifer Cabani, editor-in-chief of The College Fix. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, Ari. Always a pleasure. Got to say, by the way, for everybody out there in the audience, I'm very biased towards this outlet. So for those of you watching on Rumble, I am literally holding my College Fix mug, which they were kind enough to send me. That on the front says, awake, not woke, because I got a bit of a cold today, and I got my tea in here. So thank you very much for that. That was a very sweet gift. Oh, our pleasure. <laughs> it's a fine mug, by the way. So tell me, I saw this article you guys have, Scholars Develop Plantifa curriculum to promote eco-justice and guerrilla gardening is this like planting audrey from little shop of horrors all over the place to eat people to cut down on human population is that what we're talking about here well i have to tell your listeners we're not talking gorilla g-o-r-i-l-l-a we're talking the g-u-e-r-r-i-l-l-a gardening right so like the uh Paint war paint on your face, you know, taking, you know, trucking through the jungle and making some moves, kind of gardening. Uh, the idea being that you plant on other people's land because clearly they have colonized it and aren't treating it right, and only you, the gorilla gardener, knows how to truly allow nature and seeds to flourish. Okay, so the way you describe this, here's what I'm picturing I'm picturing Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Heading out to the jungle with the war paint on and all that kind of stuff and then planting things on other people's property. Is that are we talking about pea patches or what here? Well, one of the things that now, first of all, you have to understand this is coming from your neck of the woods, Washington State University. So these are two uh, grad students who are studying to become teachers. OK, and so they, they published their Plantifa curriculum in the Northwest Journal of Teacher Education. So it's coming to classrooms uh, near near your your listeners <laughs> uh, schools. And uh, this is really interesting because what they're telling the teachers is maybe you could fly a drone over, you know, private land and do seed bombs over this private land. Or maybe you could sneak in a whole plant, you know, maybe you could uh, baby, basically take in some plants into uh, an area and just leave them there. So these are all different kinds of ideas they have for you to sort of trespass on private property in order to be the seeds that you want to see in the world. You know, Jennifer, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but during the armed occupation of six blocks of Seattle in the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in the summer of love of 2020, the rocket scientists over there had the brilliant idea to start their own community garden, so they tried planting things on top of an astro turf field. Now, I'm sure you know that the way they do AstroTurf is they do a layer of gravel after they've killed off everything underneath it. Then they put some dirt. Then they put the fake grass on top of it. Can't imagine why these guys weren't able to plant anything. I mean, when you say plantifa, this is what I'm thinking of, the videos of that lunatic prolific offender who was the one planting all this stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember videos of that, that garden, and it, I, I think it lasted like three or four days before it just, it just crumbled into chaos and confusion, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if they ever, like, got one tomato out of that thing, <laughs> but, you, you know, the thing is, is that so the, the, the Plantifa scholars at Washington State are, are encouraging um, the, the teachers to ask the children, why is anti-fascism important to our community and our ecosystem, and why are spaces owned and private or possessed? value you know why is democracy as we understand it um are limited to humans and who what or where ought to be included in a democracy so they're t trying to take this concept of you know planting without borders quote unquote that's their little tagline planting without borders and um sort of criticize and and uh, demonize democracy and private property in the first place I see. I understand what's going on here. Okay. So they want to talk about socialist farming. Why don't they study the kibbutz, kibbutz movement in Israel now, how that collapsed the Israeli economy, and they had to be bailed out in the 1980s. We're talking with the editor-in-chief of the College Fix, Jennifer Cabani. And you had another story I was checking out here. This is from your reporter, Hudson Crozier, University of North Texas, a Harvard med school class focused on LGBTQIA plus 
infants. Can you explain to me how that works when kids at that age aren't aware of anything except for maybe they got poop and they start crying or they're hungry and maybe they start crying? Can you explain to me what this is all about? Sure. And, and to be fair, it's in, from infancy to older adults. So the idea is that LGBTQIA plus spans from an infant, the time that you're an infant to the older adult. But they want med school students to be under, to understand how to treat uh, an infant that might be asexual or intersex or queer or transgender or bisexual. So this class trains future medical doctors um, in the proper care of LGBTQIA plus infants. Um, and as they age into toddlers and adolescents and go through puberty and et cetera. But, you know, this goes into the mindset of the left, which is they don't think doctors should, should tell you, oh, it's a boy or it's a girl. They think that the child should decide once, I don't even know when what, but <laughs> apparently it's up to the kid what gender they are. So we could totally redo the bar bat mitzvah, the confirmation of the quinceanera, right? It'll just be a gender ceremony instead. This stuff never stops. Now, I'm sure you guys have been following this with what Ron DeSantis has been doing in Florida with stopping this woke education stuff, haven't you? Absolutely. I mean, he is, I love the guy. I think he's so brilliant in the way he tackles and addresses these issues. Most recently, he demanded that the public universities add up all the money that they're spending, that includes on salaries and programs, on diversity, equity, inclusion, and critical race theory. And the, the uh, universities tried to get that request thrown out of court, and the judge is like, uh, no, you're a public university. You need to tell them how much money you're spending on this. So I think it'll be a great eye-opener for the people of Florida, and I think other states should do this as well, to find out just how much money is going to, to this type of curriculum and programming. Right, and you would think, wait a second, isn't sunlight the best disinfectant? Shouldn't we know exactly how much money going towards this kind of stuff? And yet the left is fighting against it. Shouldn't you say, see, here's their argument. It could be done right here. I can make it for them. We're happy to share that with you because we believe it's so important. That's why we're spending so much money on this and not math, science, history, English, any of that kind of stuff. But the truth is, if it's all exposed, they're not going to have any arguments, are they? Well, at least they'll they'll have they'll be back up against the corner to, to explain why the cost of tuition has rise outpaced the the rise of inflation and the return on the investment is is tanking faster than the stock market and then and then parents and stock you know stakeholders and lawmakers and students are going to be like why are we going to pay for all that uh, crud you know so basically it'll hold them accountable uh, for how they're spending our tax dollars but like example the, the from the plantifa thing that's come into a classroom near you to the med schools embracing um, this kind of woke agenda and to everything in between including stem parents including stem i mean this is a real issue that we better tackle or everything we see around us in this country is going to get worse and worse unfortunately i gotta tell you unfortunately i see a very long and prosperous career for your company for its evolution not that it's a bad paper or anything i think it's a wonderful paper and i love your mug but unfortunately this woke education curriculum is going to give you guys so much content and material it seems like it's never ending i mean every day i'm sure you get flooded with stories like this how do you keep up with all of it it's, it's, it's hard because, first of all, you have to try not to get too cynical and jaded <laughs> because I've been doing this job for over 10 years. And so I try to, you know, I, I'm a glass half full kind of gal, uh, but it's really hard. You start to really worry about the future of this country um, when day in, day out, you see how they're indoctrinating our young people in, in K-12 and college. But I will say the silver lining is the young students I work with. You mentioned Hudson Crozier, who wrote that piece on the Harvard Med School class. We work with undergrads across the nation to train them up in, you know, independent, unbiased journalism. And when I, you know, they're, they're bright, they're intelligent, they're driven, they're articulate, um, they, they're liberty-minded. And those are the, that's what gives me hope, is that there's still parents out there, people like you, Ari, you know, the college fix, we're all fighting the good fight to, to make sure, uh, to save our country, to, you know, to keep it on the right course, and to beat back the progressive left. Jennifer, just before we let you go, I ask you this question every single time you're on the show, and we love having you back. Do you recommend that parents send their kids to these colleges? Yes, you do. And I always tell you the same thing, which is 
Uh, maybe. It depends on what your child's aptitudes are, what their passions are. You can consider uh, college straight out of high school, but also there's other avenues, the military, a community college, vocation, internships, apprentice, apprenticeships. So just, you know, let your child discover what their aptitudes are and don't force a square peg into a round hole. If they're not ready to go to college, give them a chance to discover themselves. But if they are and they're straight A students and they're on an academic scholarship, at least warn them what to expect when they get there. I do like that you're consistent every time we have you. Jennifer Cabani, Editor-in-Chief for The College Fix, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Really appreciate having you. Anytime.